Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are very excited to welcome our amazing guest, Kian. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I would like to begin our event by acknowledging that the land that we are on, and although this event is virtual, I have no doubts that many of you, wherever you're located, are on unceded indigenous land. Um, and that where EL specifically is located, that this land belonging to the um, tribal nations, including the, the Mohegan, the Mashantucket Pequot, the Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill Pawcasset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac and other Algonquin speaking peoples that have stewarded the lands and waterways of what is now known as the state of Connecticut. We honor and respect this enduring relationship that exists between these people and this nation and the land. We also want to acknowledge that there has is a history of chattel violence and slavery that occurred against both Black and Indigenous communities in what is currently known as the United States. Many of the infrastructures that you see or have used in college campuses um, and beyond were built by their displacement, genocide, and enslavement. So I wanna begin this event um, by acknowledging our partners. And this event would not have been possible without their um, labor and their assistance and support. And so we're very much thankful for everyone who is a part of making this event a reality. Um, and so I wanna make sure that we acknowledge our co-facilitators um, or our co-sponsors, um, the Center for Race, Indigeneity, and Transnational Migration. Dr. Matt Tanico was um, unable to be with us today, but we're still thinking of him and thankful for all the work he put into this event. Um, and also Ned Blackhawk and Isabella Robbins from the Yale Group for the, study of, for the Study of Native America. And I'd also like to take a moment to give my sincerest thanks and gratitude to both Dr. Tanico and Isabella that will be assisting in various parts of today's event. So, um, all right. And before we move on, I do want to uh, quickly introduce myself um, as the facilitator of this event. And for those who do not know me, um, I am Diana Anko Angide. I'm the assistant director for the Native American Cultural Center. She'e Diana Anko Angide in Shia. She'e look at the net and Nishla. Na apat sanumana she'e tretini de she'e na kongi gai gura. Um, and so I just wanted to explain um, in a little bit about myself. I am Reed People Clan, born for the Comanche people. Um, and my paternal or my maternal grandfather is Red Running Into Water Clan. And my paternal grandfather is Kiowa. Um, and so I'm happy to bring those, those um, my ancestors back here with me into this space. Um, and without further ado, I do want to introduce very briefly our guest speaker. Ki An is a proud Kuku Yalinja Yirba, Yirba and Torres Strait Islander song woman who recently ventured from her hometown in North Queensland to pursue her dream in Kulin Nation, Melbourne, Australia, with the name coming from the Wick people, meaning to dance, to sing, to play. Ki An aims to honor her name and ancestors through her soulful music that weaves lush melodies and words reminiscent of heartbreak and healing. At the 23 years of age, Ki An already has an impressive number of performance credits to her name, including featuring at Big Sound 2020 at in St. Kilda Festival, um, Yoramboy First Nations Festival, the Laneway Festival 2019, and so many more. So let's give our guest speaker a virtual round of applause. Thank you for being here with us, Kian. Hey, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Um, it's such an honor. Um, and yeah, it's always so awkward, but really nice to hear your bio read out to you. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, I'd like to acknowledge the, the land that I'm on. Um, I'm currently in Narum, um, also known as Melbourne in so-called Australia, and the traditional owners of this country, uh, the Wadanjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation, um, and the Bunwurrung people of the Kulin Nation. So I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past and present and acknowledge that sovereignty has never ceded and yeah, this land always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Um, 
yeah, on my dad's side, I'm Kukuyalanji and Jirubu. Kukuyalanji country, I'll try and point to it, is like far north Queensland. It's like rainforest, daintry, beautiful, lush country. Um, and then Jirubu is um, this place called Tully. It's, yeah, known to get like the highest amount of rainfall in the whole country. Um, and then on my mom's side, we're Torres Strait Islander, which is all the way up here, a group of islands. Um, yeah, we're from the western side called Badu Island. And that's where my Aka, my grandmother, was born. And she grew up on TI, which is Thursday Island. Um, yeah, and then I grew up in Townsville, which is about four hours south of my country. Um, it's Bindal and Wogarukaba country, and it's called Garambilbara. And it's, yeah, really lovely there as well. <laughs> I moved to Narum, to Melbourne, um, three years ago. And yeah, I've just been making music and performing and connecting with other First Nations people that... Um, artists and musicians and come to Nam as well and yeah it's been a blessing so yeah that's me <laughs> thank you so much for joining us um and I definitely want to um speak a little bit more about your your whole trajectory and the life that you've found you know you're fulfilling a life's um you know, journey through your music and through your family. And um, based on, you know, I don't want to sound creepy, but, you know, based on what I've seen on your <laughs> social media, it just sounds like there's just so much uh, family connection with what, um, with what you've, you've brought to the world and shared with the world. So um, I want to transition to our discussion part of today's event. And these were just a quick, you know, um, tidbits of what we're going to be covering today based on what uh, I got from some of the students who are in the class that I'm teaching this semester, ERNM 379, um, Indigenous Peoples in a Global Context. So um, one of the first questions was about, you know, what inspires you um, when you make your music or when to, to make music? Um, oh, it's yeah I guess it's a big mixture of lived experiences but then also yeah honoring my name and my ancestors and my matriarchs um yeah I think for me because I have social anxiety singing was always um a very good outlet and music and dancing and yeah, just being creative was how I kind of expressed myself and still do um so I feel like it's just a, a need for me. Um, it's good for my mental health. And I feel like, um, yeah, I'm just channeling my ancestors and specifically like my grandmother, um, who was always a really big advocate for me to sing and play basketball and do everything that I wanted to do. So singing and performing is like, yeah, my way, I guess, of connecting with those who came before me and yeah connecting with other first nations people and just yeah being loud and proud <laughs> yeah yeah that's wonderful to hear and i know it might even um go a little bit into the next question which was you know how or who you did mention a little bit of who introduced you to the world of music but if you want to talk a little bit more of like who, if anyone else was really involved in that part of like how you were introduced to the world of music uh, I'd love to yeah. hear. So, um, my parents, uh, they always get embarrassed when I say this because I've been telling reporters and all that. Yeah. So my dad was this like wedding singer and did a lot of acting and musicals and he sung like lots of boys to men covers at um, different gigs. And then my mom, she used to do like she's in this like hip hop dance troupe in Townsville and she, I don't know, she still busts out like the running man and like um, Janet Jackson moves, but um, they had me when they were quite young and I'm an only child and oh my God, love boys to men. <laughs> That's great, I just got a message. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so they had me and they wanted to name me something that kind of, um, molded that all together like dancing and being creative and um 
Yeah, that's what Kian means, and me and my dad have connections to Wick Country, which is up in Cape York. It's like this little groove thingy, <laughs> um, and yeah, it means to dance and to play, and um, I've kind of forgotten the question, but I've always loved doing that, and yeah, that's my, that's where it came from, my dad and my mom. Um, my dad actually sung on my first ever like recorded release, um, which was released last year, which was really special. He flew down to Nam, to Melbourne to sing and yeah, just growing up I've always it's just a family thing, like performing and playing music and yeah, dancing together. <laughs> yeah, um I was completely blown away when I saw some of the videos of you singing with your dad. It was beautiful. I was like, I was ready to just cry because <laughs> it was just so heartwarming. Um, and I think that's so special. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, since it came from such a, a family centered place, but um, your music can, you know, it, it's going to transcend all of those boundaries of, you know, beyond community and beyond, you know, the world clearly, because we're, you know, we're both in different on different continents at the moment. Um, but you know, who who do you feel like in particular, uh, like your audience, your target audience would be, who are you feel like you, you, you're you hoping to really reach when you um, send your music out into the world? Um, yeah, I think I, I write for myself. So I, I hope to connect with those who have similar experiences. I, I guess with the, the yeah the path I'm taking with music I'm always trying to center and amplify other black and first nation voices specifically like women and you know um people in the queer community and um yeah I think I sing for you know people similar to me um and I, most of my songs are about mental health so really if anyone can connect with that those struggles or that perspective and yeah, I think that's my goal with music. Um, I really write as a like a means of healing myself, but then, yeah, with the release of better things, I found that people were relating to it and it was kind of healing others as well. So that's a really beautiful and special thing that yeah has happened and I hope to continue that, but also not too much put not put too much pressure on myself either because <laughs> that's like such a big thing like oh you want to heal everybody oh my gosh <laughs> <Calm down. laughs> yeah yeah that's it <laughs> um okay so i was also curious and i know some of the students were curious too about how how your um, identity or your even maybe just your background uh, not just as an indigenous uh, woman, but any other aspects of the way that you feel like you identify, um, how how that affects your your music process, your creating process, all of those things. Um. Yeah, I think it's a good question. I'm not really sure how to answer, but um, yeah, a lot of my my creative process and my writing content just stems from you know my experiences and how I access the world and. Um, some of the songs I've written, I've tried to, you know, speak about how my family would have felt in certain moments and, you know, drawing from um, dreamtime stories that I've heard as a kid. So it's kind of all combines together. Um, but mainly I am try to, you know, weave those cultural elements that I've, you know, um, grown up with and learnt, but yeah, with my mental health stories as well. Um, yeah, I think I'd like to write more about, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't written um, in a, yeah, about a couple months, but there's definitely a lot more topics that I'd like to expand upon and, you know, collaborate with people too. Um, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'd love to hear more about like maybe the other ways that you imagine um, your life's journey going, whether it's connecting over 
music or if it's connecting in other ways. Um, do you have um, goals of maybe like, uh, I don't know, working with young people or, you know, talking, maybe taking a more active approach with mental health, as you mentioned? Um, are there other projects that you feel like you're just doing in addition to your music? Yeah, um, oh, I love that question. Um, so I, I really want to um, travel around yeah, this country more and center, you know, First Nations matriarchs and learn about the different songs of our country. Um, I've been inspired by this project called Mission Songs Project that, um, yeah, have kind of re re-recorded and you know just re-found um old songs that were sung on the different missions across the country but I think what I'd love to do is sing with a lot of different you know First Nations women and go to different communities um I really want to also um yeah write more music with other Black and First Nations women and um I'm trying to get into producing more. So I think, you know, sharing that skill and like um, recording and producing other people would be really cool. That's a big goal as well. But um, yeah, m one of my big, big dreams is to have, you know, a place on country. that's also like a recording studio and then collaborate with other indigenous musicians. Um, lots of different things. Don't know if it'll happen, but yeah, but the <laughs> speak it into existence. Yeah, it'll happen. <laughs> I love all of that. Um, and there was some uh, some questions that I had gotten from students about you know success. Like, what what does success look like for you? Because success to some people looks very different. And I I think um, given that um, you know as an indigenous person, I know like my goals are always different than someone else's and it, it usually has to do with what you had mentioned earlier about like um, honoring your ancestors and um, giving back to our communities so um, hearing your take on what you feel like what success will look like for you or what you maybe imagine it'll look like uh, i'd love to hear you talk more about that yeah i really love that question too um i've been thinking about it a lot lately because i've come up with some dis I've been faced with some decisions decisions <laughs> where I can choose to just excel um, and amplify myself or if I need to turn it down so you know I can it's more community centered rather than like just based on what would help me um, so I think my definition of success um, yeah is definitely more community centered like I don't want to be this one voice and not like uplift and you know bring up other you know First Nations women with me um yeah I think with activism too um if I'm developing this platform as a musician I need want to make sure that I'm still you know, listening to the traditional owners of whatever country I'm very lucky to be standing on or, you know, giving back to the community. Um, yeah, I think that's my definition of success is making sure that it, I'm still focusing on the, the community around me and not, you know, trying to just amplify myself. It's about a whole group thing. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, and it definitely kind of like is different than when you meet perhaps like non-native artists um, who are in the industry that you are. Um, and so I wanted, I wanted to see if you have um, anything you'd like to share about like the role that you feel like indigenous um, musicians in Australia, like what, what, what other roles are they playing um, and what other ways are they impacting the, the indigenous communities in Australia? Yeah, I think being uh, an Indigenous musician or like knowing lots of friends that are also in the same industry, there's definitely like an aspect of activism and having to educate um, like the non-Indigenous audience that we, we get. Um, I think last year with, um, you know, Black Lives Matter being very centred on 
online. Um, there were a lot of protests here as well for Aboriginal deaths in custody and um, a lot of yeah, Indigenous and Black voices here were amplified and um, a lot of our music was, you know, used, like obviously written as protest, but had that wider audience. So there's an aspect of education. I think our community is really good at, you know, keeping us all centered as well, though, with, um, you know, with those things of fame and, um, yeah, lots of people trying to, trying to learn but it's still like I think we all keep everyone in check you know and make it make sure it stays community focused and um it's not just you know Instagram activism it's still like I don't know if I'm making sense but yeah <laughs> no that's great I, I appreciate that because it it can definitely be um Something that I feel like we can get caught, like all of us can get caught up in is what people see and, and then actually what's actually happening in the background. And sometimes it's more important that you do it when no one's watching as opposed to when everyone's watching. Um, um, I, I did wanna ask um, a question that um, I feel like I, I've, I've wrestled with a lot as a young indigenous person here in what's now known as the United States and it's something that um, comes at me as an indigenous person, like from all like all aspects, but it's this idea of like defining indigenous. And so I wondered what you thought about if, if you're, are you feeling, do you feel like you get approached a lot from um, anyone, um, either indigenous or non-indigenous about what indigenous means or like, has that changed for you or is it developing? Um, I was just curious about your opinion on that. Yeah, I think um, for me, um, yeah, Indigenous is only defined by the person. I think in our community, it's about your connections to um, a family. Um, and I guess, I lost my train of thought, but yeah, I think I don't know, um, First Nations people here come in so many different uh, walks of life and, you know, uh, shades and experiences and it's really about how you connect with other First Nations people in, in my opinion. Um, but with our history of like stolen generations and stolen children, it's, um, yeah, I guess it's really just about how you care for country and I would say for others, but yeah, mainly for country. But I think really in identifying as indigenous or the, yeah, I guess how indigenous looks here is really just about who claims indigeneity and who, um, yeah, connects with the community. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that's um, something that definitely you can see very clearly in the values that indigenous individuals, whether it's like in music or if it's in politics and someone who doesn't feel as connected to country then, or, or to the land is, the priorities become very clear in a lot of ways, right? And hearing you speak about giving back to your community and being um, influenced so heavily by your family. I think that that even that alone says so much about um, the way that our val uh, values as Indigenous people can just be completely contrasted with others who may be doing something um, in other other ways that um, don't feel like as connected, I suppose, in a larger scheme of things. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that with me because I think that's something that um, as Indigenous individuals um, here in this space, um, we we find ourselves trying to navigate these worlds, right? And um, trying to to be um, quote unquote enough in all spaces, and it can be really tough. And it can be um, this lifelong battle that we continue to go through. Um, but it's a worthy battle, and it, I think it's it's good that we all continue to think 
about these kinds of things. Um, but I did want to transition now into, because we do have some more questions that are coming through, but we can always save those for the Q&A. Um, and that Isabella will be leading us through. Um, I will let you um, go ahead and take the, the mic. And if you want to give us any context about your songs, we're always happy to hear about, you know, more about what went into this process. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, so this is the first song I wrote when I was 16 with <laughs> my grandmother. Um, yeah, she left a really beautiful, strong matriarch legacy and um that time in which i wrote it you know she'd passed away and i was dealing with a lot of emotions but um i kind of just went back into music i hadn't written before and i hadn't really sung for me so this song was that story um i also love singing it first in whatever gigs i do because um Usually when we do an acknowledgement of country and have the traditional owners do a welcome to country, we have a smoking ceremony um, where the traditional owners will burn um, you know, native leaves, um, usually like eucalyptus or gum leaves, um, and it kind of cleanses the air and they invite um, the audience and everyone participating up to the, you know, the smoke to cleanse ourselves and to heal ourselves and the smoke is meant to get rid of any bad spirits and energy and um this song is called smoke and i think when i was writing it it was yeah to heal myself <laughs> um let's double check if this is all good Sit until the smoke fades out Sit until we're okay Forever taken 
this must have made will fade away just you Said in Tarsha to we say Mina Big Essel. What does that mean? Very big thank you. So yeah, Mina Big Essel. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do better things. Um, I released it last year during lockdown. Um, we're very lucky to you know have the, some well a lot of restrictions lifted, but. Um, yeah, particularly in Victoria, we went through like a six to eight month lockdown where you couldn't go um, more than five kilometers outside of your house. And yeah, it was pretty intense, but I really wanted to put this song out and um, release it into the world. And um, I wrote it a year earlier um, about moving away from home and trying to find my feet and, you know, dealing with social anxiety and a breakup, it was all hectic, so much. <laughs> um, but I, my dad flew down and looked after me and I found my feet and you know, connected with new friends and you know, everything turned out to be pretty good. Um, but this song is about, yeah, putting love into yourself that, um, putting love into the parts of yourself that really need it so you can grow and bloom and tend to your garden and all that good stuff. Um, so it's called Better Things. I 
and I've been wondering how, but I think it starts with, I think it starts with my mental health. But how can I grow flowers when all I've got is weed? So I'm taking them all up and planting some new seeds. Cause now I've got a blue to try and get over you. Know what to do. So I can start anew. And the paint on the bring will be obsolete. Cause one thing I know, once a better thing do. That was beyond beautiful. I can't even describe it. That was amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. If we could please give her a virtual, um, or just if your video is on, you can definitely like show us that you're copied as well. But oh my gosh, that was amazing. Thank you. Um, it's, yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's so nice to see everyone clapping on the little, the little hand emojis. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, so let's go ahead and move to the next part of our event, um, which we'll have facilitated by Isabella Robbins. Um, and I will go ahead and pass the mic to Isabella. Hey, everybody, um, I'm Isabella. Um, yeah, just I'll won't do any long introductions, but just facilitate the Q&A. Yeah, just to reiterate what Diana said. Thank you so much, Kian. That was beautiful. I feel like in like quarantine and stuff, I've like forgotten to listen to music. So this like was a really good, um, just reminding me to do that because all I do is watch TV and read. And <laughs> I think I forget that there's other forms of art and things that make me happy, but that yeah, that was one of them. Um, and yeah, just to pick up on a thread that Diana was asking in the last question before you gave us your beautiful performance, Madeline uh, Freeman asks something they're wondering is how you define Aboriginal art. I'm interested because does that mean your music requires Aboriginal references or motifs um, or can it be something you know just from an Aboriginal person alone? Yeah, I love that question, but I think it's yeah the second half that you mentioned, any art that's created by Aboriginal people. Um, I've got some art behind me, but I love this illustrator here. She's a First Nations queer artist and, um, you know, she doesn't do like traditional, um, like stereotypical um, Aboriginal art, but it's more um illustration and i guess modern but she's an incredible first nations artist and i think yeah it's aboriginal art is whatever art is made by an aboriginal person and um i think because our indigeneity is so intertwined with our identity that anything we create is 
you know, indigenous art or indigenous music or indigenous poetry. It's, yeah, but I love that question. So thanks, Madeline. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Madeline, as well. And thank you, Kian, for that um, answer. And of course, just opening it up. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to message me or throw it in the chat um, so we can read it and I'll just read it out loud. But something I've been wondering about, and I think maybe you're hinting at it, but I think oftentimes there's like a misconception or a tension between being indigenous, but also being a part of like a global community. Um, and I'm curious how you see yourself um, and your music as a part of, you know, these global solidarity movements for indigenous sovereignty or against anti-blackness. Um, yeah, love to hear your response. Yeah. Oh, um... I don't know, I think I, I find a lot of a community with definitely other First Nations people um, across the globe. I really only can wrap myself and my, you know, my land and my, you know, communities. But I, I think it, it's interesting here in, in an Australian contract, in an Australian context, because um, First Nations people here identify as Black and Indigenous, so like I would find solidarity with you know, other Black folks across the globe um, and also Indigenous folks. So I'm very, um, yeah, I just hope that I can amplify the voices that um, I'll, I guess need more amplification than mine. I still feel that I privilege, I, I'm privileged because you know I'm light-skinned and um, yeah, I'm able-bodied and um, yeah but I, I, that's the communities that I you know I guess connect with but with any activism or music I mean the music the activism that I put in my music <laughs> um, yeah I really want to just make sure that I'm amplifying and highlighting the voices that need it more than myself that makes sense. <laughs> Definitely. And I actually facilitated something similar to this a couple weeks ago, but the person said kind of what you said as like my role as, and it was another native person, is like to hold the door open, which I think is, yeah, is a great way of thinking about it. No, um, but describe it. <laughs> yeah. to shift gears a little, um, Dora asks, I would love to hear how you see your music evolving, moving forward. Where do you want to go in the future? What's next? Oh, thank you for asking that, Dora. Um, yeah, I think I just really, uh, I want to collaborate with more writers. Um, just, I think collaborating and connecting with others makes me figure out like how I want to create um, as an individual and also it's just really special to see the energy and the, the work that you can create with someone else. Um, I think like create like genre wise I'd love to write more funk stuff and disco and more like upbeat kind of happy things but still um, you know talk about some important topics but then also like just write just write heaps like random shit too. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'm seeing it evolve. Um, yeah, I'd love to, I'm thinking more about like my f performance too, because um, how I started in music was busking and just a lot of singer songwriter, solo guitar stuff and having a band around me currently has been really exciting. And then I just want to, you know, move around more and expand my performance range and um, integrate more elements, like focus on fashion when I'm performing and how that um, influences how me and my band feel on stage and um, connect with like First Nations fashion designers. And um, yeah, yeah, I think that's how I see it all evolving. But thank you for your question. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And maybe to follow up, who would be like your dream collaborator or like who do you want to make a song with or a designer you'd want to work with? Yeah, it's a good question. And 
it's always changing. I think I've always really loved Moses Sumney just because his, his work is really interesting and eclectic and um, really powerful as well. Um, I don't know. I need to find a musician that, yeah, I think it, music aside that I really gel with, um, yeah, and just get along with and have a laugh with because I think that's that's where good music is made when that connection's really, really great. But, um, yeah, I think, like, influences. I really love Stevie Wonder as well as um, Leon Le Havis. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Great. Um, and this isn't a question, but I think it's in line with sort of the fashion element. Michaela Ng says um, that they love your earrings and tattoos, which I was noticing too, like in a lot of your photographs that you use for promotion and stuff, you always have the tattoos exposed, which I love. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, a friend did it, and these ones are just made by um, a sis back home in Townsville. She's Torres Strait Islander, an Aboriginal as well, and she hand makes them. Um, yeah, she sent it to me during lockdown, and I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. I'm going to wear them all the time, and yeah, they're really cool. Um, but yeah, thanks. I got a new tattoo as well at the start of the year. It's like a little snaky baby. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> On the note of lockdown, J5 asks, how has COVID affected making music during the pandemic, especially since so much of our mental health seems to deteriorate with global events, climate crisis, uh, anti-Blackness, etc.? Does the pandemic invoke creativity or present more challenges? Um, for me, I was so struggling to be creative. <laughs> um, I think I was just very kind of overwhelmed with it all which is yeah totally normal I feel like everyone was going through it um yeah I couldn't really find the energy to be creative but um I think because a lot of I guess my creative inspiration comes from experiences I didn't really feel like writing about yeah, being stuck in the house. But it's interesting seeing how other creatives have used the time um, and really delved into their their art. Um, I'm not like that though, and I'm not gonna lie and be like, yeah, I was writing every day and I was just so inspired because that didn't happen. But um, yeah, it's cool seeing how a lot of artists have adapted and, you know, gone online and still been able to connect with other people or, you know, written songs during lockdown and produced stuff, like connecting with people from across the world. Um, yeah, I wasn't like that, but it's cool that other people were. <laughs> yeah, I don't I also like you shouldn't put that pressure on yourself. I feel I'm always like global health crisis. I can sleep for 10 minutes longer or whatever. But. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and on that note, Anise asks, how do you approach performance, especially with anxiety? And how has that approach changed, if at all, given the more virtual context over the past year? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, my experiences with anxiety and performance performance um I think I just feel like a sudden surge of like empowerment when I'm on stage um because I'm like um here everyone is here to listen to me this is kind of my moment um and doing like being able to perform has given me the confidence like off stage to just speak to people um, because I think if I can get up on stage and sing, then surely I can just say hello to people. <laughs> um, but it's it's been such a big learning journey, um, you know, starting off busking, just being like background music and literally not saying any words, just singing, and then growing to to do what I do now has been really cool. Um, but you know, it's it's. 
a big process and with anything like you just want to have fun with it um I think that's what I've been trying to center like just trying to find joy from whatever I'm doing because you know I love music and I love performing and that's more important than you know this pressure that I put on myself of what other people might think and just like yeah I'm doing this for me um and then moving that onto like um an online experience it's it's super weird because I feel like I'm talking to myself <laughs> but um it's it's still been really nice because I've been able to connect and you know um still see other people's faces and I don't know it's it's different but you just find some of the positives um I would much prefer you know being in person and um, feeling that energy that's created, but, um, it's really special, especially this, too, like, what, um, everyone, you're so far away, and it's, like, what, 9 a.m. here, and I would not have expected this to have happened, but I'm very grateful and blessed, and it's cool. <laughs> that's beautiful, thank you so much. Um, unless anyone has a final question, I can just ask one. Um, but yeah, I guess one thing that I always like to ask Native or Indigenous people, especially those who are away from home, because that's something that, you know, homesickness is something that I deal with a lot for sure. And just feeling disconnected from the people and the community is a challenge. But I guess the final question I have for you is, you know, how do you take care of yourself? And what's your advice for other people, you know, who are making the difficult decision to, you know, go away from home to expand their careers or their lives or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think like for me, self-care is always like waning and here or there. Um, but I think just trying to know my intentions of like why I'm here is is really important um and I guess like yeah being grateful for some of the things that I've like been through and learned from um like some very like practical self-care methods that I do is just really focusing on breathing and I call my parents and my aunties and my uncles as much as I can and connect to them that way um yeah I think for me like because I have social anxiety and then depression as well um I really just need to to vent to get those emotions out so either writing or just speaking to a friend um helped me a lot during lockdown but I think yeah mainly just you know my intentions I always think whenever I say or think of intentions I think of Solange like do nothing without intention and um yeah it's good to just check in with yourself and know why you're, you're doing what you're doing and back yourself and know that your ancestors are supporting you and yeah yeah <laughs> that's so great thank you um, and with that, I'll pass it back over to Diana and we can close out. But thank you for sharing this time with us and your beautiful music. I, I, and I'm sure others really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much, Isabella. It's yeah, been such a blessing. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Kian. Um, and to think it was really just your overall, I think you present yourself in such a way that is so sincere and um, I caught on to that very easily and, and for you to engage with me and I had no idea that I was going to be teaching this class for a while, but you and I had been communicating for a long time, um, through Instagram and, um, you know, it was, I'm just so thankful that you are who you are and that what you bring to the world is just light. And so, um, thank you so much for spending time with us and with our class today. Um, and I, want everyone to join me in a round of applause. And that is the end of our event today. Thank you so much. And I will see my students, I will see you all next week. Thank you so much.
thank you thanks for yeah, having me and thank you all for for being here and yeah it's been really beautiful and um i hope to stay connected if possible but yeah much love i'm in a big s <laughs> yeah, thank you kian thank you everyone have a good evening <laughs>